Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin, who's a member of the President's Coronavirus Task Force. Mr. Secretary, President Trump talked openly yesterday about a possible quarantine of the New York State area. Why did he first consider it, and why in the end did he decide not to go ahead with it? Well, Chris, it's great to be back with you. Uh, the president did very seriously consider it. The task force met yesterday with the vice president. It was the unanimous decision of the, ta the recommendation of the task force to go forward with the advisory. Uh, the vice president, myself, Mark Meadows, and others met with the president uh, yesterday afternoon, and he decided to go forward with the recommendation. What was it that made him think a quarantine might be necessary, and again, why did he decide not to do it? Chris, I think the president wanted to consider all the options. He was obviously concerned what was going on with New York. He spoke to the task force. He spoke to the governors. And he was comfortable that people would take this advisory very seriously and, and would not travel. The Coronavirus Task Force, of which you're a member, is meeting this weekend to come up with new guidelines after the 15 days how to stop the spread of the virus guidelines end tomorrow. Here's what the president said this week about what he'd like to see. I would love to have the country opened up and uh, just raring to go by Easter. As Treasury Secretary, do you think that's realistic, to open up parts of the country, to open up parts of the economy as soon as two weeks from today, which, is East, which will be Easter. Chris, I'm going to leave that decision to the medical professionals and the president. My full-time focus right now is we couldn't be more pleased that the Senate and House reacted very quickly, signed an enormous package to support U.S. workers and the U.S. economy. The president signed it into law, and my full-time focus is delivering on that. And let me just say, the, the SBA is working very closely with the Treasury. We expect to have a program up on Friday that will be up and running that will cover half of the private workforce. I encourage all s small businesses to take out these loans because if you go and hire back your workers for eight weeks, you will have a forgivable loan and the government will pay for that. So again, it is very important for us that workers are protected and this is a major part of the package. Uh, Mr. Secretary, I'm going to get to that package in a moment, but I want to press on this issue of perhaps changing the guidelines because that not only has a lot of health implications, it also has a lot of economic implications. There's been a lot of pushback from public health experts about the idea of reopening parts of the country where there's a lower incidence of the virus, uh, opening them up with perhaps within two weeks. Uh, our very next guest, uh, Dr. Tom Inglesby, head of the Johns Hopkins Center for Health Security, says this disease will not respect state borders and city borders and will move around this country just like it's moved around the world. So the question is, if the virus spread from China to Italy, can't it spread from Chicago to Iowa? And if we were to open reopen parts of the country too soon, wouldn't that be the worst thing for the economy if we see the virus spreading into more areas? Chris, I can assure you the president's number one objective is the health of the American public and protecting the American public. And we're going to do everything to support the economy. Uh, the task force will be reviewing it. Uh, it'll be discussing it with the president. There hasn't been any recommendation made yet. So again, let me just emphasize, the president wants to make sure that we kill this virus and we do it quickly. And the medical professionals are working on that. And while we do that, we have now a gigantic economic program to support American workers and American business. Yeah, let's get to that. You were the key administration of figure negotiating that $2 trillion, some call it relief bill, some call it a stimulus bill. One part of that is $500 billion, a half a trillion dollars to help dealing with various big corporations. How much discretion do you and the president have in deciding who to give that $500 billion to which corporations and under what terms? Chris, there's two parts to this program. Uh, there's, there's approximately $50 billion that we can make direct Treasury loans. 
that uh, are subject to the president in my approval. Those are specifically designed for the airline business uh, and for the cargo business, which are national security concerns, and also give us flexibility if there are other national security companies. And, and let me be clear, taxpayers will be fully compensated for those loans. The other part of the package is for us to work with the Federal Reserve. I think you know Chairman Jay Powell and I now speak multiple times a day on a regular basis. The 13-3 was a package that existed under the Federal Reserve Act. Uh, the Federal Reserve has the ability to make broad-based lending programs available. Once the Fed requests that those actions, they come to me. I have to approve them as Treasury Secretary, and in many cases, uh, I contribute capital to support that in consultation with the President. So these are very important programs. We think they can provide about $4 trillion of liquidity to the American economy. Again, we expect we will get paid back on these loans. These are temporary support for the American economy that's very, very, very critical. Critical, and we've already rolled out many of these already. But, Mr. Secretary, one of the big sticking points when you were negotiating with Democrats in the Senate is they wanted an inspector general to oversee the big loans, the big grants to big corporations. And just two hours after the president signed the $2 trillion bill, he put out a signing statement saying that he will only allow that inspector general to report to Congress under, quote, presidential supervision. So didn't that basically violate the deal you made with the Democrats in the Senate? I don't think that's the case, Chris. There's constitutional issues. Again, we're, we're going to have full transparency. The way this works is we have full transparency in reporting what we're doing to the American public. We also have an, a bipartisan oversight committee that will review our actions. Uh, we, we are fully comfortable that whatever we do, we want full transparency, and uh, we're very careful in what we're doing about supporting American workers in the American economy. So directly, Will the inspector general that was provided for in this bill be allowed to testify and report to Congress? Chris, I'm, I'm going to leave that to the lawyers, okay, and to Congress to figure out. My full-time objective right now is to make sure this administration does everything we can to get this money into the economy quickly. That's a combination of small business loans that will be available this week. And let me just be clear, this is not just normal SBA lenders. Any FDIC bank, any credit union, any fintech lender will be authorized to make these loans subject to certain approvals. We'll also have direct deposit into people's accounts within three weeks, so they have checks. These are bridge checks. We have enhanced unemployment insurance that we're working with the states. This is all about the president's determination to support the U.S. economy. Finally, Mr. Secretary, 3.3 million people applied for unemployment benefits this week. That is four times the previous highest record in the, since 1967 when these records were kept. Former head of the CBO says that we're going to see an unemployment rate in the next few months of 20 percent. Uh, your former company, Goldman Sachs, is projecting that GDP in the second quarter, instead of being up 2 percent or 3 percent, is going to be minus 24 percent. Is that what you're seeing at the Treasury Department? 20 percent unemployment, a GDP shrinking from year over year by a quarter. Chris, it's, it's hard to predict these numbers because we've never had anything like this where we've shut down the U.S. economy for medical reasons. The economy was in very, very good health and we shut it down. And let me just say we're very sympathetic to the people who, who don't have jobs. And that's why the president was very clear that he wanted me to work with Congress on a bipartisan basis quickly to support those people. So I hope, number one, businesses rehire, small businesses rehire those people now that they'll have the money. Number two, people will have enhanced unemployment insurance. And number three, people will have direct deposit money in their accounts to provide liquidity. And we want to get people back but, to but, work but, as quickly but, as we can, subject to the medical conditions. I understood. But briefly, and I've got about 30 seconds left, you're, you're saying, you seem to be saying that 20 percent unemployment and uh, GDP minus a quarter, 24 percent, is not impossible. It may not be, may not last long, but we may see those numbers. We may have to live with that. 
Chris, I don't know what the numbers are going to be this quarter. What I do think is we are going to kill this virus. We are going to reopen this economy. And in the third quarter of this year, you're going to see this economy bounce back with very large GDP numbers and low unemployment back to where we were beforehand. So the president is determined that we protect people and reopen the economy when it's the right time. Secretary Mnuchin, thank you. Thanks for your time during these busy days. Always good to talk with you, sir. Thank you, Chris.